A devastating school shooting in California, the Norman City Council approved a $121 million bond, and Apple's card issuer faces backlash. This is OU Nightly. It's a sad day in Saugus, it's a sad day in Los Angeles County and the nation for another uh, tragic shooting at a school. Panic at a Southern California high school after a shooter opens fire. Hello, thanks for joining us for OU Nightly. I'm Mariah Condiff. And I'm Cal Day. Tonight, we know two high school students were killed and two others injured in the shooting at Saugus High School in Santa Clarita, California. The suspect, also a teenager, is in custody but hospitalized. As police search for a motive, CNN Camilla Bernal has the latest information. It's the sound that no student wants to hear. It was like bang and then bang, bang, bang. Just after 7.30 in the morning, local time, students at Saugus High School forced to run or hide. We heard the one shot and then, then four after and we just started running and just all I heard, just heard was all these kids running and just screaming and calling their parents. But some unable to escape. Within two minutes at 740 our first units arrived on scene and encountered uh, in the quad area of the school uh, multiple victims. Officials confirming two students died after being treated. Others remained at the hospital. The shooter also among the injured. Detectives have reviewed the video at the scene, which clearly show the su subject in the quad withdraw a handgun from his backpack, shoot and wound five people, and then shoot himself in the head. Authorities continuing their investigation and combing through social media in an attempt to figure out how and why. We will run all the leads to ground, but at this point we have no indication of any motivation or ideology. I'm Camila Bernal reporting. Police say the suspected shooter's injuries are from a self-inflicted gunshot. And today's deadly California shootings marks the 366th mass shooting incident across the U.S. in 2019, according to the Gun Violence Archives. Now, since the start of November, the archives reports that eight people have been killed in mass shooting incidents, including today's victims. Another 61 people have been injured in mass shooting related incidents since the start of the month. Olivia Whitehead is live at the Norman Police Department to see how local authorities are working to prevent these tragedies here at home. Thank you, guys. I am here at the Norman Police Department with Chief Kevin Foster. Chief, thank you so much for speaking with us today. You're welcome. So, the first question I kind of have for you is there's been a lot of shootings going on, and especially the most recent one in California. So, what are kind of the precautions that you guys are taking here um, locally to help prevent that in local schools here in Norman? The schools have taken several precautions of secure vestibules. We recently rolled out the rave panic button for to give us a location of where incidents are. It's been used a few times on medical calls, mm -hmm. and that will cause our SROs, which we have SROs in the schools here, for a quicker response. Okay. But they get a text even before the rave panic button gets to our dispatch center. Okay. So we have a response going very quickly. Mm -hmm. We also have things in place to try to identify people that are having issues okay. ahead of time. So hopefully we can head these incidents off by uh, getting people the services they need mm -hmm. to prevent these from happening. Yeah, and so like you said, you are kind of trying to see people that could be in these situations where it could potentially happen, because there is no science to this. It can happen anywhere. So are there um, any ways that people can kind of alert you guys if they do kind of find someone that could be a little off or could see this in the potential future? There are several things. They can report it to their school or through the school system. Mm -hmm. They can call us here. They can text the 911 now. Mm -hmm several different avenues they can use to let us know what's going on, okay. even anonymously. Okay. And then um, another question I have for you is what can teachers and just students in general do if something like this does occur at their school? What are some of the precautions they can do take in their schools? At the schools, we would institute something of a lockdown uh, because the main thing is hide, run, fight of what we teach. Mm -hmm. So the first thing they would do is try to hide and secure their doors where 
the person that is the active shooter cannot get to them. Hopefully our response is quick enough, so just those few seconds of a door in between them and the person yes. allows us to take care of the problem before any more damage is caused. Okay, well perfect. Thank you so much for talking with us today. Thank you. All right, back to you guys. Thank you, Olivia. Ten men in multiple states face charges in a romance money laundering scheme that embezzled a total of $1.5 million from their victims. Many of those targeted were seniors. U.S. Attorney Trent Shore says the FBI arrested seven suspects. Five are arrested here in Norman. Three suspects remain at large, and according to the indictment, the scheme dates back to 2017. And it's been one day since the beginning of the impeachment inquiries. Our Skylar Talal joins us now in the News Center with more. Skylar. Thank you, Cal. Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi argued that President Trump's action constitute as bribery in the Ukraine scandal. About that, the cover up makes what Nixon did look almost small. Yet House Minority Whip Lisi said the president's behavior is not impeachable since neither Democrats or yesterday's star witness could name an impeachable offense. U.S. former ambassador to Ukraine Marie Yovanovitch is set to testify at the inquiry hearings tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Yovanovitch was removed from her position in May. She says President Trump and Rudy Giuliani conducted a smear campaign against her. Expected to testify in regards to the campaign Giuliani conducted to push Ukraine into agreeing to Trump's demands for politically motivated investigations. Eight more witnesses will testify publicly next week. The Trump administration is currently preparing court filings to begin taking over private land to build the border wall in Texas as early as this week. The administration has yet to confirm how much they will pay landowners, according to two officials. Jared Kushner is hosting a White House meeting tomorrow to discuss the U.S. government taking over this land to build more sections of the wall. A second death has been confirmed as the Hong Kong protests continue. A 70-year-old was voluntarily clearing the road of bricks that were thrown around during the demonstration when he was hit in the head with one of them. The protest has reached new heights and more people are being injured. Back to you at the desk. Thank you, Skylar. Now, it turned out to be a pretty nice day after a chilly start. Oh, it's been beautiful today, and Jack has a first look at the forecast, and it's hard to believe, but it's finally starting to feel like fall out there, Jack. Oh, it certainly is. It's been feeling more like winter, actually, for the first half of this week, but looking outside at the Skyline Cam right now, not a cloud in the sky. It is just gorgeous. Like, when they say it's crisp outside, this is just about the kind of weather that they're talking about. 52 degrees right now outside with light northerly winds. Right now, the current temperatures across the state is very mild, uh, mid-50s. Maybe if you're up in northeastern Oklahoma, it'll be a little chillier than uh, the rest of us, but really not too bad outside considering everything. But we're looking at beautiful weather for this uh, for the next few days. We're warming up, and then we've got to look at your game day forecast if you might happen to be going to Texas. All that's coming up in just a few minutes. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Jack. Holiday shopping is beginning to rev up. And with fewer days to shop this year, find out how major retailers are working to keep up with online shopping. Plus, making the grade, find out why officials are working to improve test scores when OU Nightly continues. Welcome back. A $121 million bond to benefit Norman Regional Hospital System was passed at this week's Norman City Council meeting. The initial vote was supposed to happen on September 25th, but concerns from council members delayed the vote. After taking time to investigate the details, all city council members voted in favor. Most of the arguments highlighted how beneficial a new freestanding emergency department next to Highway 9 will be for the community. Lower income residents that live in the eastern parts of Ward 1 are going to be a lot closer to an emergency center. I know that's going to be a big deal to a lot of those folks. Uh uh, beh behavioral Health Services and Ambulatory and Cancer Pavilion are also part of a planned West Norman Health Plus expansion. An Apple Card is being accused of gender bias, offering different credit limits for men and women. 
Robert McGee has more in Money Matters. Robert. Yes, some Apple Card customers say the card's issuer Goldman Sachs is giving women lower credit limits than men. This is true even if they share assets and accounts with their spouses. Officials in New York are investigating, which blew up on Twitter Saturday. It happened after tech entrepreneur David Heisenhower Hansen wrote that Apple Card offered him 20 times the credit limit as his wife. The two share assets and her credit score is actually higher. Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak said his credit limit was 10 times higher than that of his wife, even though they share all assets and accounts. And Google plans to offer checking accounts starting next year. They are partnering with Citigroup and Credit Union at Stanford University, and they plan to offer smart checking accounts through Google Pay. The service will also provide a digital wallet. Google hasn't decided yet if the accounts will charge fees, but the company is following the likes of Facebook, Amazon, and Apple, who all have announced enhanced money services. And pay attention to your calendar because there are six fewer days of holiday shopping seasons this year. The tighter schedule has created a race for consumers and retailers are offering plans to attract more shoppers and steal them away from Amazon. They're promising early deals, faster deliveries, and more in-store services. Major retailers like Walmart, Target, and Best Buy have been working as early as October to ensure big sales for the holidays. The National Retail Foundation estimates sales will grow almost 5% compared to last year. And Starbucks is offering a buy one get one free deal offering you a free drink if you buy one that's at least a grande size. The deal ends tonight at 7. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Robert. After Oklahoma's ACT scores ranked 47th in the nation, school officials are working to improve test scores. According to Oklahoma Watch, Oklahoma ranked 12th out of 15 states that gave 100% of students the ACT test this year. Some critics say the ACT's test is for students interested in attending college. Those who are not have a lack of motivation to test well. Other factors include a lack of funding for schools, which contributes to preparation for the test. And changes are coming for postseason high school football games. Coming up, find out new location for, st for state title games. Plus, a picture-perfect weekend could be in store. Jack Maney has your extended forecast. That's right. It's going to be a beautiful one out there, and I'll have a whole lot more coming up in weather. Taking a look at your forecast right here outside. It is just absolutely gorgeous outside. 52 degrees in Oklahoma City with a very low dew point, low humidity, light north winds. It's about as crisp of a fall day as you could ask for out there right now. For our lows tonight, we're going to get pretty chilly. Temperatures will fall down right to around freezing or just above it. We're uh, going to be well below normal with light winds and clear skies tonight. For our highs tomorrow, it's going to warm up to about like, really about like it was today. Just the winds will be shifted from north to south and uh, will warm up into the mid to upper 50s around here for tomorrow. So right now we haven't had a whole lot of rain this week. It's just been cold and well, just cold and miserable for the first half of the week. The drought monitor, we're showing that the, it's getting just a little bit drier, in, especially in southwestern Oklahoma, and we don't have any major rain chances coming up just yet. We might have our next storm system rolling in about this time next week, but until then, it's going to be pretty dry and pretty clear outside. Our fall colors, if you're wanting to get outside and do the Talamina Drive this weekend, that is, this is probably going to be the last weekend that you'll be able to do that with peak fall colors right now, especially in southeastern Oklahoma. The colors are just uh, about as bright as they will be this year. So for our game day, if you're planning on going down to Waco, it's going to be low 50s, clear, pretty good conditions for the game down there against Baylor on Saturday. So. For our seven day forecast, it's going to be very nice and mild. Very nice and mild for the next couple of days. Cool, calm, nothing really major to talk about. And that's the case for the next week or so. Uh, we warm up again on Monday after a very weak cold front rolls through Sunday night. Just more of a wind shift than anything else. And then, then we warm up into next week before our next storm system rolls in around Thursday or Friday of next week. We could be seeing some more rain about that time. All right, good weekend to put up Christmas lights or do anything, huh? Yeah, exactly. It's going to be a really good time to get outdoor activities done and just uh, prep for winter. Sounds Love good. That. Thanks, Jack. 
Well, state championship game sites for Oklahoma high schools are changing venues. The Oklahoma Secondary School Activity Association announced that all traditional championship games will be held at Watland Stadium at the University of Central Oklahoma in Edmond. Recent games have been held at Chapman Stadium in Tulsa, among other stadiums across the state. The change could go in effect as early as next football season. But switching gears to this football season, it's a big matchup in the AFC on Thursday night football. Janae, it's a meeting of two familiar foes. That's right, we'll get to see a Bedlam matchup in the pros and find out more on how volleyball survived in last night's matchup. Stick around because sports is on tap. Welcome back to OU Nightly. I'm Janae Reeves and it's time for sports. The Sooners came out on top last night against Texas Tech, winning 3-2 in a five-set match. The Red Raiders took the lead early, but the Sooners were able to hold on, winning the last two sets to secure the win. Junior Sarah Sanders had quite the kill to help seal the deal on the night, while senior Brianna Kataku contributed a big block alongside Sanders as well. QB1 Jalen Hurts has been named a semifinalist for the 2019 Davey O'Brien National Quarterback Award. He is one of 16 named to the list, but Hurts is the only one to appear the second time. Jalen will look to be the third winner from OU, joining former Sooners Kyler Murray, Baker Mayfield, and Jason White. But Lincoln Riley doesn't think it'll distract Jalen at all. I, I put zero thought into that, and I'm, I, I think, I'll say I think, I know Jalen doesn't really put any thought into it either. I mean, he's, you know, to do, to do great things, you have to have such an ultimate focus on, on what you're doing, and you've got to be able to block out the rest of the things that aren't important. Tonight, the Cleveland Browns, Browns are set to host the Pittsburgh Steelers in an AFC North rivalry game at 720. There is still hope for the Browns as the team tries to recover from a rough start. The Browns have lost the last seven games in the rivalry, but quarterback Baker Mayfield will try to lead his team to a much-needed win. The Steelers are playing at a high level defensively, but it will be interesting to see what they can produce with their run game as running back James Connors is set to play coming off of an injury. And speaking of rivalries, tonight two quarterbacks will collide just like old times. The two NFL quarterbacks last faced each other in a thriller in Stillwater back in 2017. Former OU quarterback Baker Mayfield threw for 598 yards with five total touchdowns, beating former Oklahoma State's quarterback Mason Rudolph's 448 yards and five touchdowns. Mayfield got the best of Rudolph in that Bedlam matchup while both throwing two interceptions. OU got the win 62 to 52. Jacob De Degram took home the National League Cy Award for the second straight year after posting an impressive 2.43 era, even though the Mets missed the playoffs. While Justin Verlander won it the American League side after leading the league with 21 wins for the Astros. The Rockets hosted the Clippers in, high, in a highly anticipated early season matchup. James Harden took the game over and finished with 47 points and added six boards and six dimes. Despite Kawhi Leonard's 26 points and a third quarter surge by L.A., the Rockets closed them out late with a 102-93 win. And some say family is everything, but Houston point guard Austin Rivers has a different perspective after he calls for his father, Doc Rivers, to be ejected from the game. Doc Rivers argued with an official at half court in last night's matchup between the Houston Rockets and the Los Angeles Clippers. Austin Rivers continued to signal for a tech and celebrated his father's ejection. After the game, Austin tweeted, well, Thanksgiving is going to be weird. Thanks, Janae. Coming up, how a school resource officer is saying goodbye. Yeah, it's a whole new meeting to going out in style. That's next on Nightly. Welcome back. I'm Haley Waker at the OU Nightly Update Desk. President Trump requests that the Supreme Court block a subpoena for his tax returns after refusing to release them. Supreme Court justices would be able to weigh in on Trump's claim that sitting presidents cannot be prosecuted or investigated for crimes. The president wants the court to decide the case by late June. That's it for now. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Haley. A California school resource officer went out MC Hammer style. 
Corporal Ryan Tillman performed the entire You Can't Touch This routine with several students. Now the performance was all a part of the school's farewell for Tillman. The officer is moving on to a new assignment after a little over two years at the school. Look at him get it. It's pretty good. And Jack, after seeing the forecast for this weekend, I might be doing a dance that's pretty similar to that one. Yeah, I think the forecast, the weather's actually going to be teaching us all how to Dougie this weekend. <laughs> and we're going to be watching beautiful temperatures, beautiful weather, at warming up into next week before storm system, possibly late next week. But really, that's still a ways out. We don't have to worry about it just yet. And, yeah, it's just been a wonderful, wonderful forecast. All right. We'll be looking forward to it. Thank you, sir. And thank you for watching OU Nightly, brought to you by the Gaylord College of Journalism and Mass Communication right here on the campus of the University of Oklahoma. We'll see you back here tomorrow night live at 430. Have a great evening. Good night.